If you're watching this on Moodle or floated by on YouTube, a very warm welcome. My name is Rory Lee Zokes. The following presentation does not constitute counselling training. It's an overview of theory as it relates to practice. Anyone wishing to practice counselling should undertake appropriate training and have relevant supervision. Today we're going to look at a new idea in person-centred therapy, configurations of self. And this has been um, developed and championed by Dave Means and Brian Thorne, um, the, two, the two writers who write person-centred therapy in action. Um, and I guess the best way to describe configurations of self, I, I'm going to use a quote from Star Trek, strangely enough, The Chase. And on the left of the screen, you'll see um, what looks like a pie dish with lots of little figures in. And on the right of that picture, you'll see a bigger figure. And the quote from Star Trek says, these statues were designed to be opened, revealing a multitude of similar but smaller figurines inside representing the curl on belief that each individual is made up of a community of individuals with different voices and desires the many voices inside the one and i think nothing sums up configurations of self more than this little picture on the left the idea that within us we have many different emotional voices another quote and a, a perhaps a better definition in terms of a therapeutic idea is while the term configuration may not be new the phenomenon it describes is not Writers from a wide array of therapeutic approaches have theorised on different parts of the self or of the personality. We all have had experience of being divided, of being in two minds about something. We have all experienced ourselves thinking, feeling and behaving in ways that surprise us, please us, shock us and it can seem out of character but are yet somehow very familiar and I, i've got that quote from spiralspd.co.uk which is a counseling um, website on the in the uk so i'm going to give you an example of configurations and i'd like you to think that you're working with a client you're sat in front of a client and they're telling you about the different emotions they're having and they're able to kind of name their emotions. And, and the three emotions that they name is the assassin. They tell you that this part of themselves cuts off relationships, destroys opportunities that they have, um, can, can be very painful to both themselves or others. And I think we've, we've all met or experienced people, in, in fact, we may have experienced it ourselves, where some people have, have very self-defeating um, behaviours, where it's all, maybe all or nothing, and in terms of the nothing side of it, once something's cut off, it's destroyed, it's completely eradicated, um, and it's assassinated. A good example of that would be somebody who walks out of a relationship and then does everything they possibly can to make sure that there's no repair necessary that they, they go on damaging it continually so that, um, so that it's unrepair, unrepairable. Um, addictions are the same. Sometimes people who use alcohol or drugs and get in difficulty with it may at some level be assassinating themselves and assassinating their relationships. So the client talks about the assassin and then they go on to talk about the peacemaker and also the thinker. So there's three definite emotions. And I guess for this client, this imaginary client, and these three scenarios, they may well describe the peacemaker and the thinker as part of the mechanism of protecting them from the assassin. The assassin may start off trying to assassinate um, relationships. The peacemaker feeling or part of them intervenes and the thinker considers the action. And I guess the peacemaker and the thinker actually hold the assassin in um, in stasis. You know, they, they hold the assassin back. Um, but for some clients, this, this configuration, this damaging configuration, may just be very prevalent all the time. And I've, I've called it the assassin, but it, it can be 
indecisiveness it can be um, jealousy it can be anger it can be any not for growth configuration any emotion or behavior that the client displays that is clearly they, they, they have clearly identified for themselves that is damaging their relationships or their happiness or their well-being and it happens so often in therapy where we meet a client and they tell us that you know they're always doing something or always repeating a pattern of behavior that may be damaging so we're going to have a look at this not for growth configuration and how we work with it so when we're working with configurations first of all they can be useful to look at and work with negative parts of a client's concept of self so they're really useful to work relationally at relational depth with a client who's bringing a part of themselves they're struggling with a part of themselves that is causing them pain and discomfort and anguish it could be a set of behaviors it could be a set of ideas it could even be repeated behavior the idea of configurations is connected to and works with relational depth at the point you're engaging with configurations and engaging with that part of the client you're more deeply therapeutically connected you're really with the material really working with the empathically with this person seeing and feeling this difficulty that they're having and in fact talking directly to it through the client by using configurations this idea of the configurations model it brings blockages out of the client's edge of awareness and into focus so this can be used psychodynamically with subconscious process but in person-centered therapy we're working with what the client is telling us we're not analyzing we're not second guessing the client is saying to us i have this configuration we're going to call it the assassin in this presentation but it could be a wide range of difficulties and you're working directly with that part of the client's material in terms of thera therapeutic in interventions you're going to need to work empathically you're going to have to work with the client experiencing those feelings and if you're working with very negative parts of the client's personality um, you're going to have to really engage with that and when you're reflecting when you're paraphrasing when you're with the clients empathy is really what's needed here to i guess to engage and support and to show the client that you're present and available for them support the clients and certainly don't push working at the client's pace just slightly behind the client's pace preferably because when you're working with not for growth configurations you are working with the scary material you are working with that material that the client the client may be frightened to look at themselves let's face it if you have a configuration or a set of behaviors that's damaging almost certainly you've not looked at it because it might be just too frightening too too unavailable to you and it's one of those times as a therapist where you have to be strong for the client as well you have to be strong for both of you supporting the client emotionally as they look at this difficult damaging material that may be causing them difficulty as a therapist you need to be aware of transference and counter transference if you're working with a negative part of someone's personality then almost certainly you will get transference you will feel that part of that personality you'll feel um, the the feelings and and texture of the client's material and that's empathy isn't it where the transference aids empathy because you're feeling that client's material but what you have to be careful of is it doesn't overwhelm you and then you get into counter transference so an example of that might be someone who's got an angry configuration of self where they're angry 
and they can't control that anger and you react in it you react to that hearing the client talk about it hearing the emotion around that by either being very passive because your experience of anger hasn't been very good or you become angry too <laughs> so you, you have to be very strong and very thoughtful and, and emotional robustness is a word used a lot in therapy and i think at this time you need to be emotionally robust and be prepared to support the client and be thoughtful of your own emotions if your immediacy is available to you share it with the client appropriately if say you're working with someone with a very angry configuration if you feel that that there is something coming up for you it might be that that you're getting slightly angry or that you, you, the, the, the client's emotion is, is frightening share that with the clients if appropriate that's the key of of relational depth it might be that the client doesn't realize the impact that this part of themselves has on other people so if someone was really talking about being angry and the trouble it was causing and how people are being pushed away it would be all right if you felt that to say you know it is scary it just hearing that's really scary finally be aware that you as a therapist may experience parallel process it might be that as a client's talking about their configuration it might trigger your own configurations of self so you might be in a position where you're you're kind of thinking into your own experience and pulling uh, pulling experiences out from your own awareness and that can block or shield if you like the client from you and you from the client so it might be worth thinking about as as, as the, the session moves ebbs and flows think about are you in psychological contact are you present with the client if you want further information well if you're watching on moodle if you click the little resource tab at the top I'll, I'll link to some information um, for you and if you're watching on youtube i will put some information in the information bar relevant websites that you can have a look at and finally thank you for watching